Well, it's finally here. Halo Master Chief Collection was just released early this morning and I want to discuss with you guys my day one experience with the title. Let's start off with the good. First off, I spent the entire night on Twitch streaming the updated campaign, covering the new cinematics, updated graphics, and I have to say, if Blur made a full Halo movie, I'm sure it would be a hit. I specifically grinded through the campaign missions just to watch the next cutscene. Although I felt a few cutscenes near the end of the game, including High Charity, were cut a little bit short, it still felt like I was witnessing a full-fledged Halo CGI movie, which left me begging for more. For Halo 5, I really wish 343 Industries will use Blur Studios' assets again. They did a stellar job. Playing Halo in 60 frames per second is a game changer. It just feels right as it should have always been played. Currently, due to the limitations with the game capture software, I'm unable to truly showcase how smooth this game runs. So I recommend going over to twitch.tv slash Halo and watching the $50,000 Invitational. If you were on the fence about buying Halo Master Chief Collection before after watching the tournament, I'm sure you'll be convinced. The legendary campaign in Halo 2 is the exact same way you would expect it to be, even with the legendary jackals sniping you in the head constantly over and over. It's a hell of a lot of fun. I also got a chance to try out Halo 3's campaign, and in 1080p 60 frames per second with some minor lighting and texture upgrades, the game feels phenomenal. I didn't believe the hype before I actually got my hands on the title that Halo 3 would feel different, but I can tell you with certainty, it does in a big way. In all, the campaign experience for Halo 1 through 4 is absolutely outstanding. If you're a fan of the campaign or Halo story in the slightest, if you haven't picked up Halo Master Chief Collection, you have to do it because playing every single title, 1 through 4, 1080p except for Halo 2, which is around 900p, um, in 60 frames per second, high quality, even with the old graphics on Halo 1, like rocking it out, it still looks amazing. Uh, so if you haven't tried it, you have to. Those are a lot of the good points about Halo Master Chief Collection on day one. And let me dip into some of the bad points, the multiplayer. Day 1 multiplayer was a huge headache, and as I'm recording this, it still is. That being said, with many titles at launch, it can take a few days to actually work out the networking kinks. Currently, matchmaking isn't really working at all. It can take 10 to 15 minutes or more to find a single game, and it typically launches in a 3v2 environment, making the gameplay extremely unfair and unenjoyable. In addition to this, the Halo uh, Master Chief Collection's dedicated servers are also taking a hit, with massive lag spikes affecting the vast majority of the games that are actually getting started. Some players get kicked before the game even launches, and even mid-game. Another big issue with Halo Master Chief Collection right now in the multiplayer is people leaving the game before it actually ends. Um, I haven't played one game today without at least one or two people leaving before the game has ended, and it takes a huge portion of fun out of the experience, and without allowing people to join games that have already started to fill the gaps, it makes playing a 15 minute game like a lifetime chore. Serious players that don't want to lose their rank by leaving the game have to stick in there and face off 4v1 environments where all the team just leaves because they're not actually getting the kills, they're not really comp you know, contributing, they're not being team players. So instead of actually putting in the time and effort to at least make a decent playback or actually try to win the match, they just all leave and they <laughs> just join another game. So it's just very annoying. There's no consequence right now for leaving other than potentially losing your competitive rank. But currently, where the game currently sets, most of the playlists are public, so it won't affect you if you leave. And in, even in the ranked playlist, they're barely functioning right now, so it's not a huge consequence to dip out of them. So, I seriously believe that there needs to be some kind of consequence system, very similar to what Counter-Strike does, especially in the ranked playlists. If somebody leaves the game before it actually ends, they need to have a 5-10 to 10 minute ranked ban. Um, or even longer if they consistently do it, like three times in a row, give them an hour ban from the ranked playlist. If they can put enough weight behind the decision to actually leave a ranked game, I think it's going to actually drive a more competitive playlist in general, which is exactly what we need from these ranked lists. And again, on day one, there's only one ranked playlist, and that's Halo 2 Anniversary General Gameplay. Uh, the Halo 2 Anniversary uh, competitive playlist is actually unranked. So I don't really know why it's unranked currently. Um, I'm sure that there's going to be some changes down the road. Uh, to make those playlists ranked and add more ranked uh, playlists to the cycle. But I feel like that's something that probably should have been done out of the gate. 
uh, having only one ranked playlist is kind of interesting to me in a bad way. So I'm really hoping that in the next seven days, uh, 343 Industry can take this feedback uh, that is being received from the community uh, and truly understand that this launch for the multiplayer experience was a colossal failure um, and to kind of pick it up and fix these issues very quickly before we have another SimCity rerun on our hands and that's something that nobody wants. So I hate to end the video on a bad note. In all, for what you're paying for, for having Halo 1 through 4, uh, custom games, every single map, every single weapon, every single skull, every single cutscene, cinematic experience is in the package. So it is actually an extremely awesome value. Everything in 1080p, 60 frames per second. It's really good. And I'm sure after a couple days, once they fix this multiplayer issue, it's not going to be too big of a deal. But for day one, which is what this review is, the multiplayer feature has a long way to go. And I'm really hoping that over the next couple days, we can see some fixes there. Well, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know what you think of Halo Master Chief Collection in the comment section below. Are you playing it? Are you enjoying it? What are your thoughts are about it so far? I'd love to hear from you. And thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.